Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm here to tell you all about some LGBTQ classics. 16 of them in fact. 10 of which I have read, 6 of which I have not read. Because I thought that it was about time that I should admit to you all about the very, very famous, well-known queer classics that I have never read. I'm going to admit it, I'm going to tell you all about them. I have done quite a lot of reviews of books that I personally would consider classics and I think that everybody should read and I have a whole playlist of all of those linked together. I will drop a link below to that playlist so you can go and have a look and I'll mention which ones I think I've done full reviews of. I think it's really difficult to summarise what a classic is and obviously there are lots of books that you would probably consider classics that I'm not going to mention. Please do drop um, your comments below and tell me what books you think are LGBTQ classics. Let me know your thoughts on what you think makes a classic as well. To me, I think a classic is just something that stands the test of time. It's something that people sh should or probably will be reading in generations to come, or perhaps something that really um, speaks about a specific time in a really profound way, but still has meaning later on in generations to come. And I think all of these books would classify uh, in, in that category. So I'm gonna start with the ones I've never read. Okay, let's just get this. Let's get this out of the way. I'm going to start with the ones that I've never read. I've got a list in front of me here. Um, I'm going to start with Ruby Fruit Jungle by Rita Mae Brown. No, I've never read this book ever. It was her first novel and it was published in 1973. It is a, I've been told, coming of age, uh, autobiographical lesbian novel, um, an account of her kind of young life and growing up a lesbian in America. I have wanted to read it for a very long time. I even had a library copy of it at one point that for some reason I just couldn't get around to it and then had to take back. I think I want to read this next year. 2022 should be a priority before this. So I've never read Ruby Fruit Jungle. The next book, I feel like I'm going to be told off for this because you know, as a queer person, I should probably have read Giovanni's Room, but I've never read Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. It was James Baldwin's second novel and it is set in 1950s Paris. The only thing that I know about it or my impression is that it is a miserable novel <laughs> which is all about someone who is just unable to deal with his own sexuality uh, and that's all I know about it and I think that's one of the reasons that I've avoided that and there's quite a few books on this list that I think I've avoided because I uh, they just sounded really miserable and I've read a lot of miserable queer stories and I didn't want to but I should read Giovanni's Room or should I? I think some people don't like it, but it's considered a classic. Should I or should I not read it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. The next one that I haven't read is A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood. I've never read anything by Christopher Isherwood or any of the authors that I've mentioned so far. So A Single Man is about a gentleman by the name of George who is recovering after the very sudden death of his partner. And it is about him going through life and just trying to get through everyday life, day-to-day -day routines. It sounds like exactly the kind of thing that I would like. I've never seen the movie. I believe there's a movie of this, is that correct? I think so. I've never seen it because I wanted to read the novel first. I still haven't read the novel, so maybe I should just read the book. So those are the first three. The next two I actually have copies of, yet I still haven't read them. And they are, firstly, Carol by Patricia Highsmith. Now the reason I've never read Carol before you all tell me off is because I saw the movie first and I saw the movie before I realised that it was a novel or I think I saw the trailer for the movie and thought oh, I really want to see that and then I realised it was a novel and then I did that whole mm, should I read the book first but it sounded great so I went to see it and then I thought well I can't possibly read the book now that I've seen the film like directly afterwards I need to leave it some time it's been a while now and I still haven't read the book. So um, Carol, in case you don't know, is about a woman called Carol. And I think Therese is, yeah, so Therese is a sales assistant. Um, she has a boyfriend who's really dull. And then she meets Carol and Carol is um, a little bit older than her. And they start a, a relationship. And it's very sexy. Well, the film is anyway. Um, should I read the book? I think I probably should, but I've never read it. So I should probably get round to that. The last book of the ones that I haven't yet read is uh, City of Night by John Ritchie. Um, I don't really know very much about this other than it 
It was apparently very scandalous and became a big success in 1963 when it was first released. It has a depiction of gay hustlers and um, it is about kind of the hidden subculture and underworld of is it New York? I don't know if it is or it's just an unnamed city and I think um, he goes from Texas to Times Square and it is that kind of like underground um, male sexuality evocative images of the city very much like a novel that I'm going to mention on my books that I think you should read that I have read and I will get to that in a moment but it seemed too similar to that so after I'd read that book that I'm going to mention shortly I then got hold of a copy of this and thought well I can't read this immediately because I'll just be comparing it to that one so I still haven't. I'd love to know if you've read this and what you thought of it because I hadn't heard of it until I think it was earlier on this year when I got hold of a copy of it. It's quite a big book, I don't know how many pages it's got and it's like 450 something pages so I think that's one, another one of the reasons why I've put it off for a while but it isn't one that I'd ever heard of before but everyone tells me that it is a classic and the back of this book tells me that it is a classic so I should probably include it in my classics that I haven't read that I want to get round to soon. Book from the 1960s, quite daring, quite uh, interesting and different for its time period. I should get round to reading this very very soon so where am I going to put that? I'll pop that over there. Um, so those are the five LGBTQ classics I haven't read but I do want to recommend some to you that I have actually read. So I'm going to start with ones that I don't have copies of for some reason. I must have borrowed them from the library I think. And the first one is the one I was just alluding to which is Dancer from the Dance by Andrew Holleran. I did a whole review of this which I would link to below which I would recommend that you go and check out. And this is essentially about young men in the late 1970s, I think it was published in 1978, in New York. Um, it's essentially about two different characters, one who's kind of moved from the Midwest to New York and another one who seems to have been there for a long time. And it is about the kind of the dance of their lives and how they kind of in intersect and wind up around each other in the gay community in New York in the 1970s. It's really interesting because it was written pre-AIDS, like just before. So that makes it a very, very interesting exploration of that community at that time. It's a very short novel. And to give you spoilers for my video, in case you don't want to go and watch that individual review, uh, for me, I feel like the, the, the city of New York is a character in, it, in itself in the book. And the way that that's explored is really, really fascinating. And it's almost to me as if New York is the narrator of the book, which is really interesting because the narrator is unknown. And I absolutely love it. And I think it's a, a classic that everyone has to read. And I'm gonna say that for the last time because I feel like I'm gonna say that with every single book. I'm not gonna say that again. The next book that I, is a classic I think everyone should read, I just said it again, is Oranges Are Not The Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterson. This is a autobiographical novel. It's not even semi-autobiographical. It's basically, basically just a life, it's fictionalised. Um, but, but it is, I think, quite unlike any other Jeanette Winterson novel that she's written. It feels very different in tone. It was her first novel and it, it, the writing style is quite different, but it is about a young girl called Jeanette who has grown up in a very religious household and is a lesbian and about the effect that that has on her life and what happens when her mum finds out and the kind of interactions between the two of them. I read it when I was I think 16 or 17 and it had quite a profound impact on me. I have not read it, have I read it since then? <gasps> I don't think I've read it since, that was a long time ago. I'm quite old now. Ooh, I should probably read it again. If you've read Oranges Are Not The Only Fruit recently, and would like to tell me your thoughts on it, um, do let me know in the comments below. Maybe I should reread it. I should have reread it before I filmed this video. Anyway, so the next book that I want to recommend is a book called Guapa by Salim Haddad. This is a book that was I think it won the Polari Prize a few years ago for best novel and that's what brought it to my attention and it is set in a unnamed Arab country so we don't know what country it is and there seems to be some kind of uprising some kind of drama happening politically but it is about a young man who is dealing with the fact that he's gay and having to keep that secret and it is about his life as he navigates his way through the culture of this unnamed Arab country. I think it's a truly truly exceptional novel, brilliantly written. Why do I not own a copy of it? I don't know. 
but I don't. I need to get out. I need to remedy that, I think. I need to remedy that. So the rest of the books are books that I own. I'm going to start with ones that I think people would expect me to mention. Um, let's go for Morris by E.M. Forster. Obviously it's a classic. Everyone will tell you this. You have to read it. It's brilliant. It was written in the 1920s but not published until after Forster's death in the 1970s. The reason he didn't want it published was because he kind of sent people the manuscript and said, do you think maybe I should publish this? And they said, mm. I don't know if people will like this false to mate. I really don't think they will. I mean, gay happy ending. Hmm. It is about a man called Morris who goes to university. He meets someone called Clive, um, who he falls in love with. He later meets someone called Alec, who he falls in love with. I'm not going to say any more, but look, happiness ensues. It's a wonderful, wonderful novel, and it's Ian Forster. He's a brilliant writer. It's amazing. I'm going to I'm going to put Forster just there. The next one I think, of course, I have to mention is this copy of the Picture of Dorian Gray, which I have had a very, very, very long time. Oh, it doesn't have a date in the front. I was hoping I would have. I used to do that when I was a teenager. I think I've had this since I was 15. Uh, the Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde is possibly my favourite novel of all time. It is about a young man called Dorian Gray, who is incredibly beautiful, and somebody paints a picture of him. I feel like I'm explaining a plot that everybody knows, but somebody paints a picture of him and he gets really angry about it because he says, but the painting will always stay beautiful and I will grow old and ugly. I wish that the painting would grow old and ugly and I would always be beautiful. I don't know why I'm doing this voice, sorry, but basically then that's what happens and then chaos ensues. Um, romance ensues, no chaos ensues. Um, it's super queer, obviously because it's written by Oscar Wilde. And it's amazing and this cover is terrible but i love it you should definitely read this book it is wonderful i have five more to tell you about i'm going to tell you about this one next i have a whole review of this on my channel i'll drop a link to that below kiss of the spider woman by manuel puig is a classic it is translated this particular version there are different versions of it i do believe but this particular version is translated by it is about Melina and Valentin who are both in prison for very different reasons. Melina is in there um, for being gay and Valentin is in there for being a revolutionary pain in the ass uh, uh, and causing chaos. And the entire book is written in dialogue and it does have footnotes which discuss the history of homosexuality. Despite the fact that it's entirely written in dialogue, it is one of the easiest books to read that have an unusual form. I think that's what I'll probably say about it. And it is just about their conversations in prison. And it does explore um, aspects of sexuality as well. And I just thought it was absolutely brilliant. I enjoyed reading this so much. Absolutely wonderful. The next book on my pile, another one I absolutely love, um, is Despised and Rejected by Rose Alatini. This was written and published in 1918. I'd forgotten what year then. Uh, during the First World War, I was going to say. And it is about two characters, um, a man and a woman, who you know, people think might have a relationship. They're even not sure, maybe, but actually they're both quite queer and they're not really sure how. Um, one of them is probably very gay, the other one possibly bisexual, but they're certainly very, very queer. And it also explores in fascinating ways um, pacifism during the First World War, which is predominantly why it was banned because of the pacifism, which, you know, during the First World War, probably, probably not a good idea to have that. So the next book, let's talk about, who should we talk about next? I know, let's talk about Con Tobin. I'm going to have to move these because you're not going to be able to see the books anymore. Um, so The Story of the Night is probably my favourite Con Tobin novel. It's the first one of his I read. It is about a young man by the name of Richard who lives in Argentina with his mum and uh, he is very closeted and I think the whole book is about freedom and about independence from your parents, from the closet, from other countries, because it's set in the 1970s, 80s, sorry. Um, it's set in the 80s, uh, around the time of the Falklands War. So it's a lot about kind of national independence, breaking away from Britain, anti-British sentiment, loved that. Um, and it does touch upon uh, the AIDS crisis as well. An incredibly beautiful novel amazingly written, just exquisite, cannot recommend it more highly 
an absolute classic. I have two more for you. Let's go for The Charioteer by Mary Renault. Um, this is a book which is set in, I, I forget when it was actually written, uh, 1953, and it's set during the Second World War. It is about a man called Laurie who is wounded during the war and sent to a hospital, and there he meets Andrew, who is a conscientious objector working as an orderly in the hospital, and they spark up a bit of a friendship. But then someone else, whose name I've also forgotten, comes back into Laurie's life, and that person is called Ralph. And Ralph and Laurie kind of have this group of friends who are all gay, they have parties, and I think essentially what we've got is a conflict between characters who want to be kind of openly having gay relationships but also think that this way leads to misery so they don't particularly want to do it to another person who they dearly love it's very sad it's another one of those sad gay novels but it's so beautiful it's the only book by mary renault i've read and i don't know why and i need to read more of her books but it is an absolute classic hence its appearance on this list lastly i'm going to tell you about possibly one of my favourite, most underrated LGBTQ books, which I just think is exceptional and more people need to read. It's called In the Eyes of Mr Fury and it's by Philip Ridley. I did a whole review of this, which I will link below. It is about a young man called Concord who grows up in, I think it's set in the 1980s. It was certainly written, um, published in the 1980s and it was then rewritten. It was originally published in 1989 and this is a newer edition. I've not read the original edition, so I don't know how it compares. The street on which Concord grows up in also has another resident who is sometimes known as the devil um, or judge. And he's a mysterious and scary man, but the judge dies. And then Concord discovers that his mum has a key to the judge's house and he doesn't know why. So he's trying to find out why. It is a coming of age story. It is a... I'm going to read how the back describes it, because the back describes it as um, the world's first LGBT magical realist epic, which frankly is why I bought it, because I thought that sounded absolutely amazing. I do believe this cover is terrible. I don't like it. You might enjoy it, but I'm not a fan. You can't hardly read the font. Um, no. But get past the terrible cover. The book is great. It is a wild ride. It is quite quite insane and brilliant i'll drop a link below to my whole review and you should definitely check that out so those are some of and below is a whole list of all of the lgbtq classics which i have either read or want to read do let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these i'd really like to know your thoughts also i'd really like to know what other books you would consider to be lgbtq classics and I would love to read more of them. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know what books you would recommend that I check out and I will check those out and perhaps add some more in individual, I was going to say independent, individual reviews of um, some of the classic books. If there are any books that you want me to review individually in a lot more detail, also let me know that in the comments below. And until next time, thank you so much for watching.